Hey everyone, I'm Tom June, and welcome to UK Space News. Now, in a departure from my normal UK space industry roundups, this one is coming at you right after information has been released, because it's just too good not to talk about. As mentioned in my previous video, assisted by the amazing Space Kate, thank you so very much for that, Rocket Factory Augsburg shipped the first stage of the RFA-1 rocket to Saxavord Spaceport in Shetland this past week to begin their summer test campaign ahead of a planned launch later this year, with this image being the only proof that that core stage had made it safely to the island. Now, however, RFA dropped this trailer video on X, showcasing the stage's arrival at Shetland, transportation to the spaceport, and being hoisted up onto the launch stool, which is where the footage gets truly exciting, and something I have been itching to talk about for quite some time. I've talked plenty over this past year or so about the look of that launch pad and the launch stool, and whether the stool is going to be accompanied by a launch support tower, with indications given in previous images and from sources on the ground that that would indeed be the case. While that is still to be seen, what we have confirmed in the footage is that RFA are in fact going to be using SpaceX style hold down clamps to pin their rockets to the launch pad. Just look at this shot here from underneath the stool as the first stage booster with those five helix engines is moved into place. And then this shot here of workers around the base to make sure everything has lined up correctly. This is just amazing as it gives us our first real glimpse at the setup at Launchpad Fredo and we can now begin to speculate just what a launch from the site will look like. Okay, so maybe it won't be as much of a spectacle as seeing millions of pounds of Starship thrust thundering the biggest rocket ever flown skywards, but we can visually understand what it is that RFA are going for in terms of how their operations will work. Eight massive clamps will hold the rocket in place as the full capacity of nine helix engines combine to produce 900 kilonewtons of thrust eventually lifting an estimated 1300 kilograms to low Earth orbit, powered by a mix of RP-1 and liquid oxygen, commonly referred to as Kerolox. But for the first series of tests, five helix engines will produce 500 kilonewtons of thrust at maximum output. As with most rocket tests, we'll see them likely start out smaller, perhaps starting with just that single center engine to identify any structural issues with the stool and pad itself. As we saw with Starship Flight Test 1, a crucial aspect of these tests isn't just about putting the rocket through its paces. The teams will need to ensure that the pad itself can withstand the forces produced by the rocket engines as it strains against the hold downs just itching to break free, while the forces produced by the exhaust will be teaming down on the flame diverter and concrete base some 12 meters below. This would pretty much seem like a good place to start. RFA already put the Helix through its paces last summer, and they know it can go at full power for full flight duration. But the unknown here is how well the launch pad and launch stool will perform when put under the stress of engine firing. So yes, I think this is the most likely scenario here. And from there, expect more engines to come online at varying thrust levels until all five are fired up, possibly and likely at full power. So what happens then? Well, given this is a pre-launch test campaign and not a build and quality campaign, once the rocket integration facility is complete inside, expect the RFA-1 to be taken down from the launch stool and moved over there for those missing four engines to be installed before going back to the stool for even more powerful testing. I can't wait to see the footage that will be coming our way over the next few months as we count down to that first flight. And yes, the summer of fun at Saxavord is now on. But just as an aside from the rocket stage itself, 
we can see from aerial shots that work still has to be completed around the pad and stool, with sections of steel and piping still visible. We can also see what looks to be the flame diverter underneath the stool, covered in scaffolding and sheeting. Obviously, it's covered and we can't see the condition that it's in, but judging by the, uh, the shape and the dark shadowing underneath there, there is a possibility that it is complete and just being shielded from the weather. It certainly appears that teams were listening to social media commentators when it came to having that in place, after the amount of consternation levelled at SpaceX for not having one underneath Stage Zero at Starbase. Yikes. Well, it again goes to show just how committed Debbie, Frank and everyone else connected to and invested in this project really are. They are, after all, building the UK's biggest spaceport, our very own Cape Canaveral. We can't thank RFA and Saxivord enough for sharing this footage with us, and we cannot wait to see more so that we can dive into all the goings on from the launch site. I'm still aiming to be there to cover the first launch for all of you, and if you want to help me achieve that goal, then give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. As always, a massive shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters who continue to make these videos happen. And consider hitting me up on X where we are always talking spaceflight. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Tom June and I'll catch you next time.